Coach Eric Mangini now. Coach, what do the yeah. Texans have to do tonight to pull off the week one upset over the Chiefs? And good morning and welcome back. And it's great to have you with us. <laughs> Uh, good to be back. Good to see everybody and uh, excited about tonight. I, I, I'd say the first thing that they have to do is they, they've got to play complimentary football. And and that sounds like a, a coaching term, but, but it's true in the sense that offensively, they're going to need long, sustained drives. The last thing they want to do is to try to play fast break type offense with the Chiefs. They're, they're going to lose on that. Running the football, the Chiefs struggled some with, with stopping the run last year. I think they were 26th. So those long, yep. sustained drives offensively and, and try to figure out a little bit of, a, of what their identity is going to be with, with, without Hopkins. And then defensively, it's going to be really important to, to mix coverages. If you're going to double team, look, take your pick on who you want to double team. You just can't do it play in and play out where it's always Travis Kelsey. They, he, Mahomes can't come to the line of scrimmage with pre-snap information. Otherwise, he, he's going to kill you. And then I'd say, and I've said this a thousand times, he's so dangerous in the pocket, you've got you've to make sure that he doesn't get out of the pocket because those broken plays equal big plays. And, and containing him and keeping him in the pocket is, is the other element defensively that they're going to have to do. So... It Coach, I, to me, I'm, I'm going to lay out kind of specifically four things, and I bounce it back to you and tell me how it resonates with you. I think the first one, and this is going to sound obvious, but in this game it's particularly important, they must win the turnover battle. Not play them even, and if they, and if they play, are negative in the plus minus, they have no chance. So that's number one. Number two, Brandon Cooks, who's listed as questionable, he has to play and not just be a decoy. He's got to stretch the defense in order to open up some of those running lanes or intermediate passing if David Johnson's coming out of the backfield. The third one is J.J. Watt has to have a monster game. He is, when he, I know he is not defense three-time defensive player of the year caliber anymore, but when he's been healthy, he's been outstanding. And lastly, I think Bill O'Brien's got to be super aggressive on fourth downs. The Chiefs have shown the ability in years past to score whether they have 75 yards to go or 45 yards to go. The key is to keep your offense on the field. So those four things, if we're talking about a Texans upset tomorrow morning, Coach, I think it's going to be because the Texans checked all four of those boxes. Well, t typically you do try to play a lot more aggressively when, when you feel like you're facing a team that you're, you're outgunned with and you'll take some more chances on fourth down. But the last thing that, that you want to do is is give Kansas City opportunities with, with great field position. So understanding understanding and when to take those chances and, and when not to take those chances, uh, I, I do like what you're saying in terms of, of aggressiveness. Playing a clean game, yeah, that's something that you strive for for every every game. But you're right, giving them opportunities with turnovers, that'll be an issue as well. In terms of individual performances, J.J. Watt, yeah, that would help a lot, but I think collectively, mm -hmm. the back end, the secondary, they they can't not give Mahomes a bunch of pre-snap information because otherwise J.J. Watt won't even have a chance to rush the passer because the ball will come out quickly. Yeah, Coach, this is how I see it. There's two big factors in this game. One is Deshaun Watson, and, and Nick, you did a good job of highlighting the defensive struggles last year and then also against the two matchups that they had. J.J. Watt and that defense, I just can't see those guys giving up four touchdowns in the second quarter again. I can't see those guys giving up 50-plus points again. Like, what they did was we, we don't see that week in and week out. Like, Mahomes putting up 50-something points. Mahomes scoring, throwing four touchdowns in the second quarter. That's almost impossible. Now, Nick, I know you probably say the yep. other. So I don't see this defense struggling the way they did. But the biggest factor is Deshaun. Deshaun and his maturation. Deshaun is a player that does the hard things easy. He can make the big play. But we know that if a quarterback is going to lead the way, it's about situational football. It's about being able to get to your first read, your second read, and then going to the check down. Or if the check down isn't there, if no one's there, throwing it away. This is a guy that think he can win the game on each play that is, is called. He can. But you got to play chess. Don't play checkers. 
So, Coach, there's a lot of people talking about X's and O's. Uh, Wilds, I, I know you, you, you see the game differently as well, which I always love your perspective. But, but before we go there, Coach, I want to know, like, in the meeting room, you're the head coach, I'm player, I'm sitting in the front, I got my notepad open. What message are you delivering right now? Because this is something we've never seen before. We're dealing with COVID-19, no preseason. How are you going to speak to us to get us to do the things we need to do to be prepared for this moment? Well, the, the most important thing Great going question. into the first game, and, and the first game is always, is always the hardest game because of, of so many unknowns. You're doing things new. They're doing things new. You don't know how things are going to line. And now with no preseason, you've got the added element of yeah. not even being able to get a baseline. And that's like a, a baseline offensively, defensively, but even more importantly, on special teams, you're, you're going in blind. So there are things that are going to happen in the course of the game, and especially the early part of the game, that are going to be disruptive. You may blow a coverage. You may you may give up a, a, a sack that – because you don't have the right communication with the offensive line. You, you may see a personnel group that you haven't expected, you didn't expect. You've got to relax and be able to come to the sideline and get those things fixed. This first game, the, the intensity level too, it's like being over caffeinated. Everybody's so hyped up to start playing that you can, you can be exhausted by halftime. It's got to be, they, they're not going to win the it's game so in the first quarter. This, this game has to be won over the course of, of, the entire game, and if guys are spent or guys are fighting or frustrated early, Kansas City will just roll up on them. Wow. Well, Coach, with the lack of the preseason, is there an element of um, taking advantage of that rather than being like, uh-oh, we might make mistakes or stuff might be new to us? Is there an element where, like, they haven't had a preseason, I think we can do X and put them at a disadvantage right away? Yeah, now you're going to have to figure out what X is. Offensively, they'll go out with a script, and they'll try a lot of different things early. And whatever hits, then you try to give them a ton of that during the course of the game. Defensively, it's more problematic because you've got to react to everything they do. So if they want to come out with five true wide receivers, you need to have an answer for it. If they want to come out big, you need to have an answer for it. So it, you're preparing for so many multiples of multiples defensively, it, it's a lot more challenging. It's whoever is able to come off on the sideline, understand how the game's unfolding, talk about it, and communicate it effectively. That's the team that has the edge. Coach, I can't believe you didn't say the one thing that I said earlier in the show you would say, that teams don't come in exactly where they left off, that we all start at the starting gate. At the same. I had you pegged for that. I said he was going to say those exact words. Super Jenna, Bowl hangover is a real look, thing. This What's is, that? We're still in the first quarter. We have a whole. We have a couple more segments. You killed me on that one. Oh, I, 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 play, I played the whole game already in my he head. You had that for later. Uh, we got you some started too balls. fast. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.